We got a quick follow-up video on the machine that we built last week, the $1,100 all AMD gaming machine. So what I wanted to do is go over just some of the features that makes this machine so appealing. Uh, just a quick recap, it's made off of the uh, AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor. It's absolutely awesome processor. You can get it for about $175 right now. And that comes with a cooler. So that's really important as part of this semi-budget machine. Now, yes, if um, you really wanted to have, I guess, the best performance out of this, you would get like a, a Be Quiet Dark Rock or a Noctua cooler of some sort. But I actually like how this Wraith uh, cooler uh, performs. It does a good job of keeping it cool. And frankly, you know, for what this is going to be used for, works just fine and keeps the cost down. It is built on top of the um, Aorus X570 Elite with the Wi-Fi motherboard. Uh, it's got some interesting features wrapped into that. The uh, graphics card that this has got is the Gigabyte um, 5600 XT, which is a very, very good graphics card for the money. I really enjoy how this thing uh, is performing so far. I've played a few games on it. We're gonna go over those benchmarks in a little bit, just a couple, but I'm not gonna go over you know, overboard on this one. This isn't a, uh, a CPU or a, a GPU review, but moreover, uh, more so a um, review of this really nice mid-range, lower mid-range uh, gaming PC. Um, I do want to start off by saying that I really like how Gigabyte has made some improvement, improvements in their uh, their BIOS setup. It is so much cleaner and easier to use than it used to be, and it wasn't horrible before, but I think right now ASUS has the target for the uh, the best BIOS out there. Again, that's my opinion. I, I feel like there's a lot out there that feel the same way when it comes to easy use and the ability to overclock a uh, CPU. This uh, Aorus, um, Motherboard has got a great BIOS. So let's dive on into a couple things here, show you what I thought. Okay, the first thing we're gonna take a look at here is the BIOS. I wanted to touch on this because it is so nice and clean. Um, I'm actually gonna switch over to the easy mode here just so you can get a quick uh, overview or shot, snapshot of what this looks like from the beginning. Uh, obviously I've got my RAM uh, set from the XMP profile and it was so easy to do. You literally go over here to where it says the XMP and you can just click it and it turns it off or you turn it back on. It is that simple. That is awesome. I love that. And then you've got your fan set up over here that um, this was easy to get into. You just again, hit enter and it takes you into your fan setting. And these sliders are very well managed and maintained. And I like one, how easy it was to control this. But the other thing I really liked is you could go in and you could set up fan profile and set it to everything if you wanted to click OK and they would all be the same. Now, I do have a separation between how my CPU fan cooler is set up compared to the rest of the uh, case fans, but I have all of the case fans set the same. And I just want to point out that this is my idle temperature. Again, that is because I am using the base uh, or just the spire, and I have the um, uh, the curve set not very aggressively, so it's going to be more on the quiet side than it necessarily will be on the cool side for the um, for the CPU. Which, mind you, this is air cooled. I'm very happy with that. That's great. You'll also notice I've got my CPU voltage at 1.344. I actually manually adjusted that because. When this thing uh, came out of the box and I put it in, it was at 1.416 for the voltage, voltages on the core and it was toasty in a heartbeat. Now, this is supposed to be able to run that way, but I just, I know there's myself and a lot of people that aren't comfortable with keeping my CPU core at that high of a voltage level. So going into the advanced level, and this is what you are presented with for your various screens, and they're very easy to use. I just went through and just kind of checked everything. I've got my CPU ratio set to all cores, as opposed to individually. I've got uh, the ratio set out of the boxes in auto, I'm not playing around with that because of how this is being used. And you can see I manually set my, my CPU core right here. 
This is a very user-friendly BIOS. It's very clean. I very much like what uh, Gigabyte has been able to do with an updated version of their BIOS uh, for ease of use and just overall appearance. So let's flip over into um, Windows and take a look at uh, some games and a couple benchmarks and see see how this um, takes a look or how this looks for gaming and we'll kind of go from there. A couple things I want to point out here right off the bat. Um, I am using MSI Afterburner just to basically, uh, I guess, uh, monitor some of the things uh, within the CPU and the GPU temperatures, that kind of thing. Uh, I am not doing any overclocking. All I've done is move the power limit up to plus 20 on the graphics card and then set a manual fan curve. That's it. I've not done anything else within here. So uh, what we want to do here, and let's just go ahead and open up um, a game here. Actually, let's, yeah, let's open up a game. And we'll open up Ashes of the Singularity just because it's kind of a nice on-screen representation of uh, what your card may look like. I should minimize that. Okay, right off the bat, I want to point out that this looks awesome. It's nice and smooth. And this is with, uh, obviously, a um, setup as a um, 1080 uh, P setup. Uh, this monitor is the Scepter um, 24 inch, 165 uh, Hertz refresh rate monitor. This monitor is inexpensive and is awesome. I can tell you that anyone that wants a nice inexpensive monitor that will get the job done at a high refresh rate, this Scepter monitor is something I would highly recommend all day long. Uh, first off, GPU right now, while it's active here, sitting at a comfortable 40 degrees, uh, on, at the uh, core, your VRM, you can see it's sitting at 38 degrees. Memory is sitting, I haven't done any type of overclocking, so you can see how the uh, memory is playing around here as well as the core clock. It tells you how much power is being drawn, and it's not a lot. Um, I was really impressed with that. There was a couple games I was running while benchmarking, maxed out at like 140 watts of total power drop. CPU is sitting at 75 degrees Celsius. Now, again, this is on air cool, all core synced. Um, and it's the stock cooler. So that doesn't concern me one bit. I'm very, very impressed with how this is running. Your CPU utilization's at 84%, 83%, somewhere around there. Your GPU utilization's on 50% because of how this uh, benchmark is set up. So this gives you a really nice uh, look and feel as to uh, how these two are paired together and how well they work in this type of a benchmark. Uh, again, really smooth looking. I'm really impressed with this build. Okay, I went ahead and loaded up a little Overwatch here, um, which not playing this to be judged because I'm not very good at this. I don't play that much. However, uh, first off, you can see how smooth the game is playing. Now I got the settings all maxed out here. This is at 1080p and the temperatures are nice. That GPU temperature hasn't even gotten uh, above 40 degrees yet, which I think is absolutely awesome. I got sniped there right off the bat, so that, that's amazing, right? Let's see if we can get back into battle here and kill a couple people. It sounds so morbid. You can see how smooth this monitor, um, or I shouldn't say the monitor, you can see how smooth this game is to play and how just great everything looks. It's everything's responsive. There is, uh, I mean, this is, this is awesome. This is all on a $1,100 all AMD machine. I mean, uh, I have a feeling my frame rates are prob probably capped. So we're gonna go on my menu here. I wanna take a look at something real quick. So I have my frame rates capped, unfortunately. And we can see why that was. So now I'm up over a hundred frames a second.
popular game that's uh, been played a lot as of late. And this is uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Okay, here we are in the uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. And again, just to give another look at a um, little higher end um, game. So far, this is a really enjoyable experience to be playing on uh, 1080p with a setup like this. And as it's loading in here, we can see our GPU temperature up here is at that uh, 3940 degrees. Utilization 96%, CPU utilization 89%, our CPU is in the mid 70s, low 70s for its temperature. And you can see the watts that are being pulled on both these. I mean, your GPU is, looks like it's close to the 100 watt, watt range and you got your CPU pulling close to 80 watts, not quite. And your frame rates, you know, 65, 70 FPS and this is on um, high settings. This is a really playable experience. Should you wanna jump into the game and play it like this? Obviously, this is just a benchmark, so it isn't me running through and actually showing you how to play the game, but um, not that I'd recommend that for an enjoyable viewing experience, but this is, again, just meant to give you an additional uh, title that you can see a little bit of performance out of. I mean, this machine is driving this game very well. So just to wrap this up, this is a really nice, simple machine. $1,100 is a lot of money, don't get me wrong. However, in the grand scheme of things on computers, uh, you can spend $2,500, have a much higher end gaming machine. You can add, you can go $10,000 in a heartbeat if you're getting you know, a dual 2080 Ti's and a 9900K on their top end motherboard and 32 to 64 gigabytes of RAM. It just depends upon what you put in the machine, obviously, as to where the cost is gonna come out and what you're trying to do with it. This, if you're trying to play games like Fortnite, and CSGO, um, Overwatch, it's awesome. I mean, it, 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 pair it with a nice high refresh rate monitor, it's absolutely awesome. You can play your AAA titles, such as uh, Tomb Raider or uh, Jedi Fallen Order, as you've been able to see here. A very nice playing experience. You just gotta play with the settings. Obviously, uh, the 5600 XT is not your top end video card, but it does a great job with, um, the equipment that or it does a great job for what it is um anyway i'm really pleased with this um i hope the person that's going to be using this is going to be loving this as well so this just ended up being a quick overview of what this 1100 dollars amd gaming machine can give you and the type of performance that you can expect from it hopefully you liked today's video if you did hit that thumbs up button for me if you didn't you know what else to do hopefully it's not that hit that subscribe button for me and we will see you in the next one